hearty welcome to the video on the questions for revision the topic covered under this uh, video are functions relations and inverse trigonometric functions reference material in all chapters of class 12 is available easily to all the students but the students are not able to gather necessary help because detailed explanation of the solution step they need recollection of the concepts required they need and the tips to do the problems with slight changes they need and tips to reduce errors they need the above needs of the student is taken care of at this tutorial series and revision means looking back over previously learned information ensuring that it is clear and fresh in the mind the ton questions from selected topics is compiled at this video series the answers to the compiled ton questions are presented in pdf and video format start your revision by downloading the questions for revision and this material is only a supplementary to the revision strategies plan and executed by your experienced teacher let us move on to the questions now question number 1 mcq set a is given and the relation is given ordered pair then we have to check what is the nature of r let us check all the three that is reflexive symmetry and transitive and let us try to answer the question let us try to check whether it is reflexive a element is related to itself for 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 all are available there therefore it is reflexive let us check whether it is symmetry if 1 comma 2 is there that is if 1 is related to 2 2 should be related to 1 now let us uh, try to check out whether 2 comma 1 is there no 2 comma 1 is not there therefore it is not symmetric therefore reflexive but not symmetric is the correct answer but let us try to check whether it is transitive 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 is there 1 comma 3 is also there first related to second second related to the third therefore first and third are related in the same fashion i have checked for others therefore it is transitive actually this checking is not required for this one mark question because we can directly tell that it is reflexive but not symmetric that is option number a let us go to question number two here you have been given a function f of x is greatest integer function we have to check its nature whether it is neither 1 1 nor on 2 or it is bijective 1 1 but not on 2 but on 2 but not 1 1 but anyway all of you know the answer directly but let us suppose if this question is asked to be checked for two marks how to do it let us check we will take two elements from the domain that is 1.5 and 1.6 and let us try to check their images now the image of 1.5 is also 1 under this greatest integer function that is the speciality it, it, it gives you the greatest integer less than the value of x for f of 1.5 and f of 1.6 give you the same answer but they are not equal images are equal but the pre-images are equal for two numbers you are getting the same image therefore it is not 1 1 now what is the speciality of this greatest integer function images are all integers for non-integers will not have no pre-image for example if you take 2.5 on the right hand side side it has no pre-image in the left hand side therefore it is not on 2 therefore the answer is a neither 1 1 nor on 2 question number 3 it is from inverse trigonometric function the principal value of tan inverse root 3 minus secant inverse of minus 2 we will try to find it now tan inverse of root 3 now the secant inverse of minus 2 we can make use of the property secant inverse of minus x is pi minus secant inverse x let us use it now pi minus secant inverse of 2 now if you know the value of secant inverse of 2 directly you can do it otherwise you can use this formula also secant inverse x is cos inverse of 1 by x but now we will apply the values now pi by 3 is tan inverse root 3 minus pi cos inverse 1 by 2 is pi by 3 therefore the answer is 2 pi by 3 minus pi the answer is minus pi by 3 option is a go to question number 4 we have to find the value of sin inverse of cos 13 pi by 5 
Now all of you know that for sine inverse of cos 13 pi by 5, we should get the answer as a principal branch. I am writing it as 2 pi plus 3 pi by 5 and 2 pi plus 3 pi by 5 of cos is the same thing. But there is sine inverse of cos 3 pi by 5. But all of you know that sine inverse of sine we need. How to convert cos into sine? Sine of pi by 2 minus x. Therefore, sine of pi by 2 minus 3 pi by 5. Therefore, the answer is sine inverse of sine of minus pi by 10. Making use of the property, it is minus pi by 10. Therefore, the answer is B. Let us move on to question number 5. Prove that the function from natural number to natural number is 1, 1 but not on 2. Whenever you are proving 1, 1 and on 2, have an I over the given domain and the codomain. Based on that only we have to check whether it is 1, 1 or on 2. How to check 1, 1? We have to take two elements in the domain. Assume the images are equal. We have to prove that pre images are also equal for 1, 1. This is f of x1 is equal to f of x2. I am simplifying them, bringing x2 square to the left hand side. a square minus b square formula is applied. I am taking x1 minus x2 outside. Out of these two products, x1 plus x2 plus 1 is not equal to 0 because all the numbers are natural numbers. Natural plus natural plus 1 cannot be 0. Therefore, x1 minus x2 is equal to 0. Therefore, you started with f of x1 is equal to f of x2 getting x1 is equal to x2 therefore it is 1 1. Now let us try to prove that it is not on 2. For that you have to take y from the codomain. You have to take y is equal to f of x and y is equal to x square plus x plus 1. One way of proving it is now you have to prove that there is one number on the right hand side that is the codomain which is not having pre-image. You can prove it but now let us try to prove it in a, this way. That is, I am converting it into a quadratic equation in x. I am solving it using the formula minus b plus r minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. Now, I am getting this one that is minus 1 plus r minus root y minus 3 by 2. I have to check whether this is a natural number or not. Certainly not because y is a natural number. y minus 3 may not be a positive number. It may be negative. Therefore, x cannot be a natural number. Therefore, this is not on 2. But we have proved that it is 1, 1, but not on 2. This is the curve of that function, x square plus x plus 1. Now, all of you know that what do you mean by that 1, 1? For every element, that, that should be the image should be unique. It is there and it is not on 2. Let us go to question number 6. Yet, n denote the set of all natural numbers and it is defined as ad into b plus e is equal to bc into a plus t. Here what you have to be very careful is, here the elements of the for checking, you have to take the elements which are all ordered pairs. You should be very careful. You have to take a, b, c, d, e, f like that only. You should not take a, a, b, b, c, c like that. You should not take. Here only most of you are doing mistakes. This is a relation not defined on a set. It is a relation defined on cross product set n cross n please check out how this is being uh, done how this relation is formed ad into b plus c is equal to bc into a plus d now all of you know that how to check out reflexive you have to take one element for reflexive take one element and check for symmetry take two elements for assume and check for transitivity, take three elements, assume two conditions and then prove the third condition. Let us see. A comma B belongs to N cross N. I am assuming that A comma B is related to A comma B. As per the definition given, I am just checking it out whether AB into B plus E is equal to BB into A plus B. Either LHS is equal to RHS. Yes, fine. Therefore, R is reflexive. Check out how it is being multiplied and added. That order you have to remember so that you can prove it very quickly similarly let us go to symmetric now i am taking two elements a comma b and c comma d i am assuming that first they are related from this relation i am getting that c comma d is related to a comma b now i have made some changes by 
modifying the terms now what you can do is by assuming the first result you can check the second result also that is second element related to the first element therefore r is symmetric let us move on to transitivity here uh, i am taking the first is related to the second and i am little bit changing it by pulling that b plus c by b c is equal to a plus d by a d i am getting the result 1 by c plus 1 by b is equal to 1 by d plus 1 by a now similarly when c comma d is led to t comma f it happens like this once again i am dividing i am getting this result let me take out these two results over here and let me add them when i add i am getting 1 by b plus 1 by e is equal to 1 by a plus 1 by f let me take the lcm and do the cross multiplication when i do it i am getting a comma b related to e comma f please check out how for transitivity we have to prove for reflexive we have to check for symmetry we have to assume and check therefore this is a equivalence relation let's move on to question number 7 We have to find the value of tan inverse of tan phi by six plus cos inverse of cos thirteen phi by six. Remember, tan inverse of tan is always not equal to x. It, tan inverse of tan x is equal to x only for principal values. We have to convert that phi by six and thirteen phi by six to principal values. Let us see. Because we are now I have written you the range for tan inverse x it is minus pi by two to pi by two, and for cos inverse x it is zero to pi. Let us try to write. 5 pi is 150 and 13 pi by 6 is 390. Mentally, I am converting them into degrees so that 5 pi by 6 how to write? 13 pi by 6 how to write? 5 pi by 6 I have to write it as pi minus pi by 6, 180 minus 30. 390 I have to write it as 360 plus 30. So only for just quick reference, for tan pi minus pi by 6 is minus tan x because tan pi minus x is minus tan x. Cos 2 pi minus x is in the fourth quadrant, therefore cos x or oh, plus x. Okay, it will be in the first quadrant once again. Uh, therefore, tan inverse of minus tan uh, pi by 6, and you are getting the answer as minus minus pi by 6 plus pi by 6. Therefore, the answer is zero. Fine. Let us go to question number eight. Find the domain of sine inverse x square minus 4. Be careful here. The children will think that range is given. Therefore, directly you will write minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. But they are asking you the domain. The domain of sine inverse x is minus one to one. All of you know because we have converted it for converting that sine inverse x into a inverse trigonometric function. Well, but now we have to find the domain of sine inverse x square minus four. Therefore, all of you know that for sine inverse x, x lies between minus one to one. Therefore, x square minus four lies between minus one to one. Now go on, do it. To get the value of x, step number one, add four. Therefore, I am getting x square greater than or equal to three and x square less than or equal to five. All of you know how to convert it into inequalities. X less than or equal to minus root three and x greater than or equal to root three. X greater than or equal to minus root five and x less than or equal to root five. By clubbing these two, we are getting that domain as minus root five to minus root three and root three to root five. Now let us check the graph of it. So this is the graph of that sine inverse x square minus four. You are seeing the domain. What do you mean by the domain? The value of x. It is from minus root five to minus root three and root three to root five. Well, let us go to assertion and reasoning questions. Assertion is given at domain of a function is given and reason is given. Whenever assertion and reason question is given, first check whether the assertion is true or false. If it is false, then reason definitely it will be true because in that option we are having only A is false but R is true. One of them will be false. Both cannot be false as per the given condition. Therefore, check the assertion and check the reason. Suppose if the reason is used for the assertion, then you have to go for the option as such. Okay, anyway, let us go for the domain. Domain of secant inverse x, everybody we know minus infinity to minus one union one to infinity, and therefore it is given domain of secant inverse to x, so it will be minus infinity to minus half and half to infinity. Therefore, assertion is true. Let us now check whether the reason is true. Secant inverse of minus two is pi minus secant inverse two as per the property, but this is two pi by three, not minus pi by four. Therefore. A is true, but R is false. Assertion is true, but 
reason is false let us go to question number 10 the assertion is the function f from 2 to infinity to b defined by x square minus 4x plus 5 is a bijection then b is 1 to infinity the reason is if it is an onto function condition is given now let us now check whether the assertion is true domain is 2 to infinity therefore let us find what is f of 2 f of 3 f of 4 f of 5 and so on now i have taken only uh, integers and checking now all of you know that it always starts from 1 it goes up to infinity therefore the range is 1 to infinity now what is given in the assertion it is given that the function is a bijection what's the meaning of bijection it is on to if it is on to the codomain and the range are same for codomain is equal to range therefore assertion is true range is 1 to infinity therefore assertion is true capital b is 1 to infinity now let us see the reason reason is the condition given for on to therefore reason is also true a and r are true and r is the correct explanation for a Re assertion is true reason is also true reason is the correct explanation of the assertion thank you friends uh, success is the dependent on the efforts all the best